Hello, welcome to your new WordPress WooCommerce site from Gecko Gully Websites. This is a quick overview to show you how to get started with entering your categories and your products. This is a generic, if you like, video that I'm making for um, for as many of you as I can, as many of as many of my clients as I can, so that I can show a lot of you the basics. Some of you will have special requirements and I will go through those special requirements um, individually with you. When you first log into your admin, you'll see a screen something like this. Now, um, one of the things that you might have noticed when you logged in is you got a really horrible um, uh, password that I gave you. To change your password, up here you'll see Howdy and your name. You go there, you click on Edit My Profile and then you can scroll down and here it is here you'll see the new password so you can put in your choice of password in there you'll have to put it in twice you can scroll down to the bottom and click on update profile and that's how you can change that horrible password to something that you're going to like a bit better um, back to the first screen again this screen is called the dashboard now um, I've made another video that will show you how to customize this dashboard so that you can see you know different things when you first log in but the main thing I want you to do at this stage is to start entering some information into your website um, the first thing you'll need to do is to go to products and then go to categories within that by the way, this menu down the left hand side, um, some of you will see the same options as this, some of you will see different options. If I talk about something in a video and you don't have access to it, let me know and I'll make sure that you have access to what you need access to. Now, a category is a group of products. So for example, if you were selling fabric, then fabric would be a group of products, so a category. So let's use that as an example. Let's put in fabric, okay? Um, basically, all you need to do is type in fabric, go down here and hit add new product category, and it's added that category for you. Um, you can have categories within categories. So you might say, um, let's see, spots spell it right Christine spots and that one could be within the fabric category so it's parent is fabric so we can go down there and we can click on that as well okay so that's basically how you set up your category structure you set categories subcategories you can do sub subcategories so you can have one within spots like blue spots and then within blue spots you can have big blue spots whatever you want to do okay you can have as many categories as you like and you can um, have them in whatever hierarchy you like as well on your website, uh, when you go to see your website, if you've only entered a category and you go to your website and you see, hey, nothing's changed, that's because a category won't appear in your category list until you've actually got products in it. And you can see down here, obviously, we've got zero products in each of these. Um, one quick little thing, I'll, I'll just add another one here. Um, have a dashery. By the way, that's called notions in some countries. Let's go to haberdashery. If you want to, oh, now there you go. I, I, by mistake, I put that underneath the fabric one. So let's click on edit and let's change that to none and then update. And yes, I'm going quick, but I'm doing that on purpose. And now, if um, there's a few ways we can have the list of categories shown on your website, one of them is in alphabetical order, and the other way is in in category order. Now if you want to change the category order you simply move your mouse over the one you want to move, hold down the left mouse button and then drag it to where you want it. And then if you have got category order specified for your for the order of your categories on your website it's going to go um, it'll go up there you know that'll go haberdashery and then fabric and then within fabric it'll have spots. Now a lot of the settings for your site you'll be able to change under WooCommerce and then settings um, hopefully a lot of these things will be set up um, in discussion with me when we first start things like your tax your shipping those sort of things um, but if you ever do want to tweak them or have a look and see well what are the settings I've got then you can go in there and have a look at those okay so that's how you add categories and then that includes you know the the order of the categories and so forth Let's see, we go here, we go to products. Once you've added some categories, you can start adding products. Now there's two ways to add a product. You can click on add product here, or you can click on add product up here. It really doesn't matter which one you click on. 
we go to add product now this box we've got at the top here is the name of our product okay so you simply put it in the name of the product that you're going to be selling so let's use an example um, let's call it spell that right Ginny buyer um, glue spots now a few things here when you're putting in a name of a product it's a good idea to say what it is I mean you might know that Ginny buyer blue spots is a fabric okay but if people are searching for a by the way for those of people who are not familiar with fabrics Ginny buyer is a designer of fabrics um, so you might know that that particular one is a blue spot but you know, sorry is a fabric let's put in the word fabric okay so that people who are searching for it are more likely to be able to find it like on Google and things like that so we can put that in there and if you know the um, the code for that now I'm just making this up you could put H123 into the name of the fabric as well so that makes it really obvious that that is that particular fabric that that you're stocking right that's Ginny Byers code now here you'll see that it's created a permalink for you um, that is the URL or the um, domain name if you like the website address for this particular fabric okay now let's go down here and it says uncategorized there because we haven't put it into a um, category yet but that'll change in just a minute here we put the description now the description we can say this is a lovely blue fabric with spots okay you want to use some keywords in there so you want to use the sort of words that people are going to be trying to um, search on Google to find this particular product so they might be looking for a blue fabric spots that might be what they're they're searching for um, if you really want to you can put an image in there you can put a picture in there and I'll go through how you put pictures into things in just a moment but um, mainly this is for words okay now next thing let's go over here and go to we'll put it into that category that's all we have to do is tick that box now you don't have to tick fab, uh, spots and fabric because it's going to appear under fabric anyway because it's in spots okay we'll go down here a bit further now this area here which is the product data area sometimes when you first go into this it's going to look like that you'll just see this line product data okay and if you click on this arrow here you'll see that it expands right now the SKU if you're going to be using them and it's probably a good idea to do so that's the unique code for this particular product now what did we call it we called it H123 so let's call it H123 it doesn't have to be in the name of it but if you you know if you've got a code that you want to use you can do that the price now um, the price is per item so if you're selling fabric by the meter or by the yard this is the price per meter or per yard so let's say this one is $15 okay. now sale price if we want to have it on special we might say okay it's going to be on special for $12 you can even schedule it so you can say well it's going to be on special from that date to that date okay so you can put that in there if you want to um, you don't have to and we don't have to have it on special now don't put a dollar sign in the box or whatever is your currency symbol and and um, make sure that if you don't have it on sale you don't put zero there because that means it's free okay um, tax stuff that will be set up in discussion with you know so that I understand what you're doing about tax so usually you won't have to worry about that inventory if you have an online only shop then you might want to keep track of your stock levels within the um, you know within your website you might not but if you want to if you want the system to keep track of how many you've got left of things so that you don't accidentally sell out and then suddenly somebody's placed an order for something that you don't have then um, we can use the stock levels um, let me know what your requirements are when I'm setting up your website chances are you won't even need this okay if you're running a physical shop then I recommend you don't do this like if you're in you know, a bricks and mortar shop because if you have um, you know sold an item in your shop your stock levels on your website are then going to be out of date so it's much better not to worry about stock levels if you've actually got a physical shop but let's assume you do want to um, keep track of inventory of this we need to put in here how many we've got in stock is it in stock or out of stock well in this case it's in stock 
um, that that may or may not be displayed on the website depending on how we've got your, your stuff set up are we going to allow back orders when we get down below you know when we get down to zero um, you can say do not allow allow but notify customer or allow so that's the stock stuff now um, most of the time you know if you're going to use that then you'll just put in the stock levels another thing that you can do is you can say well I only want somebody to buy one of this item so if that's the case you can say yes just only one of those items um, so that people don't accidentally say they want to buy two of a product um, or, or more the main reason you might want to use that is if you're doing downloadable products in which case you would have ticked this downloadable and I'll do I'll cover that in another video but um, at this stage you, you probably won't tick that but if you do for some reason only want people to be able to buy one of these things like might be a limited quantity where you're only allowing people to have one of them then you can tick that and that will uh, that'll do that now the other ones here shipping I'll discuss your individual requirements with you linked products um, we probably won't really use attributes now attributes is where you have different options available for a product so for example if you were selling t-shirts and they were available in different sizes then your attributes might be small medium and large okay I'll make another video to explain to you how you do that um, but just letting you know that that is an option um, advanced you probably won't use so you don't need to worry about that now other things over here featured image now I'm going to go very briefly into how to manage your images images are known as media in WordPress if you want at the moment we don't have anything because this is a brand new site we don't have anything loaded into um, this website so what we want to do is we want to go to upload files which it's defaulted to because we didn't have anything in the library um, then we can go to select files and we'll find the file we want to upload I'm, I've got a little picture that I like to upload for testing it's my cowboy picture okay so that's now uploaded that picture and we can go set featured image and then that picture there will now be the image that will appear on the website for that particular product okay don't worry about how big it is here we've got ways of you know changing all the pictures later on you don't want to be uploading a picture which is massive like you know 2,000 or more um, pixels in width or in height a good size is around 500 to 800 pixels in height but as I said the the WordPress system will um, manage your products manage your images for you now that's pretty much it as far as adding a product is concerned there's a few other things on here which are more advanced and if you're needing them I'll let you know how to do them this is the basics okay so when you're ready we can then click publish now I'm just going to have a look at the website itself now to get to your website quickly you can just go up here and click visit site oops sorry this one um, <clears throat> we can go to shop this is a brand new site I haven't done any formatting on it at all um, yours by the time you get it will have a bit more formatting on it than this so here we've got our fabric our product we can go to here now you can see that it has cropped it and it has um, you know made it so that it fits a standard size box um, depending on your requirements we can crop it or shrink it or whatever you want to do and then we can click on that if we want to see the original size image and we can even actually on some situations we can zoom in okay, so that we can see it's very big um, and that's how it's going to appear I mean it's going to be much much prettier than this of course but that's what your website will look like if you want to go back to the dashboard you just click back up here and there's your dashboard again so you can carry on entering products so that's an overview or when you're ready you can go back up here and click on log out so that's an overview of how you add categories and how you add products um, if you've got any questions about the basic stuff get back to me as I said this is the very most basic and um, I you know I'll be putting in some more options and things like that for those of you who require it thanks